What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode here at Kibby Tech. Uh, behind me, you see we got the chrome truck on the trailer. So I just got back from the dyno, spent the morning over there with Eddie at Addiction Motorsports, getting this thing all dialed in, put down some good numbers. And again, we're not looking for crazy horsepower. It's not a drag, you know, drag car or anything. We know what the motor is. It's a 430 LS7, 11 to one compression. It's got a pretty nasty cam in it. We were just looking to get it to run and idle and just run how it should run. Around 400 at the tires is what we were expecting. So we'll go see what the other guys are up to in the shop and then uh, maybe let this thing loose. All right, back here on Dan's truck, we got the front radiator back in and we got our ID Designs front plate all tabbed out and then we mocked up the Mazier billet water pump. So now we can build the water lines. It's pretty simple, connect A to B right here. We'll do silicone connections at each end and then just aluminum, uh, basically just aluminum tubing, mandrel bent tubing to connect the points and then we'll run a filler because we don't have a filler on the radiator. So we'll run a filler in the top radiator tube here and get it pretty high because this will probably be covered with a panel. So we'll have that come up and pop through the panel over here. Pretty similar to what we're doing on the white truck over there. Also, you see the headers are in there. So the headers are done. Dewey knocked those things out. Inch and seven eighths, stainless, all stainless, stainless flanges, stainless collectors, stainless V-bands. And then we got it connected to the rest of the exhaust. We got O2 bungs on each side so we could run dual O2 so we can monitor each side. And yeah, moving back in here. We got Chase working on some more tubes in here. So we got the start of the center console here. We did a, it's pretty much just a long mitered tube. Uh, pretty similar to like how that one started. So basically from here, we'll connect from this corner to this joint and then that corner to that joint. From this corner down to here, from there back up, from there down. So pretty much triangulate the whole middle of the chassis and that establishes a good area just to sheet metal right to the tubes to establish our trans tunnel and our floor. Once he's done with these ones back here, we'll move back onto the front and then we're actually gonna pull this motor and trans out and put the actual transmission and engine in the truck. So we get exact spacing on everything because this mock-up case uh, is a little different from the reed case 480 that we're going to use so we're going to get that in there just to make sure none of our tubes are in the way of any plumbing or anything like that and then we're going to get the seat mounts established somewhere in here as well which will be on our sliders so we're going to do sliders on the front and then the rear seat will be fixed things coming along pretty good checking a lot of big ticket items off the list next will be floor and firewall and then um, front shock mounts all right, over here on the D90, uh, we got the cage all double passed. Put back in, we added some corner gussets on the front corners here, and then we're working on tying in the front. Decided to do a bolt-on removable tube that'll bolt on, or weld to this plate. This plate will bolt onto the chassis. So a tube will land here, come up, bend, and go in right here. And then there's another plate like this on the inside. That plate will weld to a tube, which will weld to the cage. So it'll basically bridge the front of the truck with the rest of the truck, keep the front end from wanting to move up and down. And then we're also gonna do another plate across here that'll bolt in. And then we'll have a couple kicker tubes that'll land on the shock mount, keep these shock mounts from wanting to twist in at all. So that'll really uh, make the front of this thing solid. And then uh, after that, we'll get the motor back in with all the exhaust and everything, and then start buttoning up accessories and uh, front limit straps and just a couple other things like that. Get the front diff in, get the drive lines made and just kind of check everything off the list before we tear this all the way down for uh, powder coat and paint and stuff like that. All right, back here on the Tundra, you see we got the fuel cell out. So I mentioned before, after the owner saw the dual dry brake cell that we did in the race truck, he really wanted that. So. We got one of those ordered up and we got the old one, which is brand new, out of the way. So we're gonna clean all this thing up and then get that new cell dropped in here. And the difference between the new cell and the new cell <laughs> is dual dry brake and then it adds a little bit of capacity. So you can see like the gray truck has just the standard cell and then the race truck has the dry brake cell, which you can see the outside corners come up real tall. So it's got a dry brake uh, fueling system on each side 
which gets us from, I think, 86 gallons to about 92. A couple more thousand bucks, and you got faster fueling and a few more gallons. All right, over here, we got the new fuel cell for the Tundra. Everyone always wonders what's in the fuel cells, like we've gone over it before, but foam. So here's like the yellow foam that they use in the fuel cell, and they use all their leftover pieces to pack the box when they ship it. So we got uh, this thing, we're gonna pull it out here in a minute after he's done cleaning the back of the truck. We'll get this in there and we'll get started on uh, mounting this in there because all the mounting will be different for this one compared to the old one that didn't have the dry brakes. Always exciting when these big boxes show up from Pyrotech. All right, small little update on the Raptor over here. You can see we got the bed on, bed cage is in, all the fuel cell plumbing is done, wiring for that is done. Got bumper on, got the top panel back from Linex. So when the tailgate goes back on, you really don't see anything, you just see Linex panel there. So super clean. Couple more panels at Linex. We made some covers for these and a cover for here as well. And those are getting linexed on the top side as well. Transmission coolers are in there. I got the crossover plumbed and then I just got to plumb those top two to the in and out of the trans. Got the bump stops in, got RPI 12 point hardware on those, which we will be using on all of the key components like shocks, uh, trailing arms, anything on the rear end will all be RPI 12 point aircraft hardware. Fuel filler is in, just simple, uh, two and a half inch tube with a billet cap on the top. Everything on this truck is just basically raw aluminum look and semi-gloss black. So the shocks are all black with the silver zinc bodies. And then we just did a satin black powder coat for all the powder coat. And then all our billet stuff will be raw. It'll be a nice look, it'll be all black and silver and obviously gray on the body. Rear end's getting powder coated right now. So once that comes back, we can assemble that, get the wheels back on this thing. But yeah, coming along. Here's a good one. We'll have Evan answer this one. Evan, come here. What's more important to you when hiring new? Work ethic or outright skill? Also, are you looking for someone to sweep the floor? I get that all the time. This Canadian can't handle another winter in Northern Ontario. A, I added that in. Uh, work ethic. It's easy to teach people. Well, it's easier to teach people, I feel like, than to try to get them to be, like, want to do the job, basically. That's, that's my opinion. How did you get a job here? The Instagram of Kibbe Tech when they had a poor hiring time on their page. That was it. Came in though, because I sent my email and didn't respond back, so got to come in. I was, I was busy that day. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. Hey, just showed up. Would you start like the next week? Yep. Two weeks? Three weeks. Yeah. How was that? The rest is history, as they say. Yep. Ryan, could you talk about your background and where you learned your craft? Um, I think that would have to be covered in a whole episode of its own. My background is riding dirt bikes. <laughs> Pros and cons of billet versus steel. We've gone over that before in episodes and I answered it for this guy and then he asked me again. <laughs> I think we get more precision tolerance with our machine parts and the way we design it, I think we get more strength. Higher tolerance, more strength, and less welding time, because obviously it's all machined. So while we're machining parts, they could be building other parts. How do you guys drop the stock frame rails? 3D scan or just measure everything? So those, you just, you pay a subscription to SEMA Garage and you basically, we just request files from the factory. 
Or if that's not an option, then yes, we will 3D scan something. Or we will also just measure stuff out and draw it that way. Status of the 6100 truck from before our hiatus. Well, we never stopped working, but it's a door slammer race truck that's basically a 6100, and someone else asked if it was mine, but it is not mine. None of the trucks in the shop are mine. I always get that one a lot. So yeah, we're still working on it. Motor's getting built right now. Gray truck update. What was that, like two episodes ago? Cost, everyone always asks how much it costs. So basically, we have our parts we sell on our website. Prices are all there, pretty transparent there. Builds, you see everything that we have in the shop is full custom from the frame up. Raptor, not as much custom from the frame up. All of our custom builds like this, or like say like the Raptor Punisher, a truck that style. Pretty much anything that we're gonna work on in the shop, 100 grand is the starting point. So anything under that pretty much won't, uh, won't touch it. Not because we don't want to or you're not good enough for us, it's just all the parts that we're making in the machine shop and our production parts, that takes a lot of time. And say if someone wanted a bumper or some fenders or something like that, that just takes too much time away from the big builds. So we just focus on these big builds only. So if you notice, every truck in the shop is just a full, complete build. So yeah, pretty much starting around 100, 150 grand will get you in the door and then go from there and we don't skip out on any parts so if you want to do something cheap then we just won't do it let's say you want to cheap out on your wiring and buy a harness from summit or something like that like we won't do that we won't run cheaper wheels we won't run cheaper hubs third members rear end housings shocks like we won't run anything that's not highest of quality because we give you the highest of quality of our work so we want the parts to be suiting to, to our work. So yeah, there you go. That answers the how much question. All right, so that wraps it up for this week. This thing is rowdy as heck, a lot of fun. Don't forget, ask us questions again when you're watching this right now, and we'll answer them next week. Oh, like and subscribe. And comment and tell your friends.